Hi guys, this time we're going to look at the Ender V2 Pro, a small lightweight 3D printer. I picked up the Ender V2 Pro off of Amazon for a really reasonable cost, and I've heard rumors of them going for as low as 129 US at certain places. We're going to check out this budget-friendly printer next on the corner. While I did do a live stream with an unboxing and first print, unfortunately the audio was off on there, so I apologize for that. We'll have that fixed for the next live stream. But we'll try to cover some of those points in this review. The build quality is okay in my opinion. The injected molded parts do feel a little cheap, especially the screen hookup. It's all kinds of loose and wobbly. I don't like that, but I'm sure you can print some mods to firm it up. But the printer does have a plastic feel to it. It comes with a magnetic build plate with a sticker on top. This is pretty much the standard for most economy printers nowadays. It has a build volume of 165 by 165 by 180, and its bed temperature can go as high as 80 degrees Celsius, and the nozzle temp up to 260. It also has a Bowden extruder, which should make it okay for PLA and PETG. There's a little drawer you can have for all your accessories that come with it, and they give you a fairly good selection of those, but the drawer does stick and it adds to the plastic feel. If you saw the live stream, and I don't blame you if you didn't, the assembly was quick and easy. Probably took us about 20 minutes or so to put the small machine together. The instructions were clear and precise, and I actually really like the quality of the instruction manual. The V2 Pro features Marlin 2.2.36 and the Creality 2.4 S4 board. Once the printer was assembled, I ended up trying to print the test print, which is a small bunny rabbit on the SD card. It was the only test print, but it came out quite well. Other stuff on the SD card include a video on how to install and unbox the Ender 2 Pro, a nice digital manual, it's very nice and colorful, and finally a reskin version of Cure that they call Creality Slicer. I did choose going forward that I like Prusa Slicer and it does have a default profile for the Ender V2 Pro. So I thought I would try that to run these test prints with. It does not have a profile for TPU, but there are PLA and PETG profiles. So those are the materials I will be testing. Of course we have to print a Benchy. This was printed with a maize green PLA and came out decently. Even though the Benchy looks good, we need to continue to test different aspects of this little printer. Next was a 3D printer calibration test, and as you can see, it came out quite well. There are a few little hiccups on it, but overall it did quite good. Following this, I said let's try some retraction, so I downloaded the Retraction Spider-Man head. Now this model is really fantastic, and I did end up breaking, unfortunately, some of the little connections on the back. There is some drooping on it, but the retraction and stringing are at bare minimum. I decided to test the print volume and I took the STL for the Moon City version 2 and this looks absolutely phenomenal. I really like the look of this. There's a slight droop at the very top and light stringing, but again, the Ender V2 Pro does a good job. Following that, of course, I've been on this kick for Legendary Dragons, so I decided to print off one of these. I had to scale it down 90%. This would be the biggest drawback, the build size. The 165mm build size is a bit constraining. I'll put my cell phone on the bed, as you can probably see, it won't be able to make a phone case. This will limit the models you can make. Unfortunately, the Dragon did not finish. As you can see, at the very end, it kind of broke three of the build plate in certain areas. I'm not sure if that's because I scaled it down, or if I just didn't have my Z offset quite right. One more print I decided to do was a vase mode to really see how big the print area goes. And it looks really good as well, but if you look on the side here, you'll see this. I don't know how I managed to slice this and get it to print, but it looks like it's a little bit off the bed. So I'll have to check on how the nozzle was centered and how I had it set up in the profile. I have some marble filament kicking around, so I thought I'd give a shot at one of Fotis Mint's models. Look at this. Doesn't this look absolutely amazing? This is a great print. This is great print quality from the Ender V2. Long live the Emperor. 
I'm going to attempt to print some PETG on this printer using the default profile. The only thing I changed is I'm going to lower the temperature just a little bit. I'm going to print it at 0.12 layer height and hopefully it gets some nice detail out of it. And I'm going to add a brim. So wish me luck and let's see how this turns out. For the generic profile, this print looks pretty good. It has a little bit of cooling issues on the overhangs, but once you tune that profile just a little bit, I'm sure it will look even more amazing. So what does the Ender V2 Pro stack up against? I'm guessing the closest competition would be the Kingroom KP3S. It does have a bigger build volume and direct drive. It also feels a little more solid in my opinion, as I own one. This little printer, however, does surprise me with the ability of what it's able to print and how the print quality is. Would I recommend one? Well, that's up to you. The build quality and build size are the two drawbacks for me. Had the build size only been like 15 or 20 more millimeters on the X and Y to bring it up to 180 or 185, a lot more items would fit on this build plate and it would be a no-brainer for the recommendation. But if you don't have a large space or if you're looking for something to start out with, this is a great little printer at a great price. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you're cruising through the channel, please hit the subscribe button. And until next time, keep on printing.